It's not over. Stop the fight! No! People! Everybody, everybody, I come here for everybody! Kill everybody! I'm the champ! I'm the king! Kill everyone! Ah! All right, guys, welcome back to Broke Bets. Uh, Lane here going over our bets for Blades versus Pavlovich, and I got Carson on the ones and twos. What's going on? Uh, yes, sir. Um, excited for uh, this week's fights, Blades and Pavlovich. Yes, sir. Uh, coming off four winning weeks in a row. Um, if you guys didn't catch our last video, uh, you didn't see the, see the bets we got here. Got right or wrong. Again, four weeks in a row on a roll. Um Coming in the Pavlovich card, got um, a lot of bets, a couple small ones that add up there, but uh, overall about eight units on the line to win that about back. So let's start with the first straight bet. Um, taking Matt Semmelsberger to beat Jeremiah Wells. Um, Matt Semmelsberger just a little bit going under the radar, I think, on for people. And, you know, Jeremiah Wells is getting these highlight reel finishes, but Blood Diamond was kind of a layup of a fight for him. Um, you know, Warley Alves, not really the most consistent fighter who he's beaten. And then, uh, got him I'm losing the name right now, but, uh, you guys know he just flatlined that other dude, but Matt Semmelsberger, yes. That, yeah. And then, uh, Matt Semmelsberger though, this dude survived chaos Williams. He's got power in his own hands. And I think he survives that first round and we're going to see Wells fade and Semmelsberger put the pressure on him. And Semmelsberger's right cross, man, it's money. You know, he dropped um, Jake Matthews with it multiple times, and I just, I don't see uh, Jeremiah Wells being able to stay away from it when he's exhausted. So uh, I'm taking a stab at Matt Semmelsberger. I didn't get him at the best line. Um, he floated to a favorite pretty fast when I was thinking about betting him. Uh, moving down. Oh, also on that uh, Matt Semmelsberger fight, you guys might have seen on the Instagram, I found a mistake on bet us for odds and uh bet the fight not to go the distance but they refunded my bet because uh they misplaced it and shittily enough i didn't get that but anyway um yeah it's refunded next ricky glenn i'm taking him to beat chris Diagos. this line came down from minus 215 i believe to now minus 150 where i just don't think Diagos is that great of a fighter he's been a uh, wrestler uh, most of his time in his, or in his career with little to no damage. And I think that Ricky Glenn's going to come in here and uh, have the better striking and also um, have the grappling to compete with uh, Diagos. And uh, that that's evident from Ricky Glenn's last fight with uh, uh, Blanken again. Yeah, Grant Dawson. Grant Dawson. Um, you know, he got taken down, but he also had his moments in round three and pretty much submitted Grant Dawson in the third round, but the bell saved Dawson and uh, ended up being a draw from the, the last submission. But I just like his power better here. I like his striking, and uh, I got another bet on this fight down the road, so we'll uh, talk about that one soon. Um, next one. Um, we both like this bet. Um, taking Francis Marshall and Bobby Green together. Um, didn't get the best line on Bobby Green, but it got a better one on Francis Marshall. I just think Marshall's, uh, he's got the whole package here. He's got the wrestling, the pressure, the cardio, the power. Um, and I think that he's just going to be a problem for people. He fights like a little Drew Dober. And uh, what I've seen of William Gomez, he's very good. He keeps range very well, and he can compete in grappling. But I think that... Uh, uh, Francis Marshall's just got a little bit more power here and will do more damage in this fight. And, yeah, I think his uh, striking will separate him from Gomez. Yeah, Gomez more relies on his kicking game to uh, uh, keep things out there. And when the pressure fighter's coming forward, I don't think Gomez will have that opportunity either. So, um, Bobby Green, this may be a common occurrence in these, these bets here, but uh, it, it's easy money on Bobby Green. I mean, truthfully, if. Jared Gordon's at a reach disadvantage against a guy who fights really well with his boxing at length, has an unlimited gas tank, um, a good chin. Don't let that Drew Dober fight fool you. This guy survived Fazeev and other people. Um, he's fighting a guy with little power, and his weight ways to victory in fights are wrestling, and uh, he's not going to be 
out wrestling. Well, I mean, he could definitely, he might be a slightly better wrestler than Bobby Green, but he's never going to hold him down in this situation. So Bobby Green's just going to be easy money right here and got him in a couple bets. Uh, yeah, just as we are saying with Bobby Green, putting him and Montel Jackson together, um, Montel Jackson, just the size, the length, the fact that he has good BJJ, um, the heavy hands when needed. I just don't think Ronnie Yaya at this age can really prove too much more, especially with a win over Montel Jackson. That'd just be very tough to happen. And, uh, again, like I said, anchoring that with Bobby Green, um, uh, I just don't, I just don't see Bobby Green losing this fight. And, uh, like I said, I, I, I pair him with everything on this if I could, if I really wanted to, but, uh, making that a 1.5 unit bet, I think that both these guys get the job done. And I, I think that's a pretty easy payback. What do you think of these two? Yeah. I mean, Bobby Green, uh, should have the clear advantage in the striking and be able to, uh, fend off the takedown attempts from Gordon. And Jackson should just be better everywhere. I think that's uh, pretty self-explanatory. Also, I was just thinking, like, take your take yourself back to the Patty Pimblet fight. Like, when did Jared Gordon land his strikes? Mostly in the pocket. Mostly left hooks when Patty had his chin out in the middle of nowhere. Jared, I mean, Bobby, Bobby's just not going to be present in those spots, and Jared probably won't find those strikes. He's going to sit at the end of that jab. It's going to be game over. Um, prop bets. Brad Tavares uh, versus Bruno Silva. I'm going with the over two and a half. And I know Bruno Silva is a proven finisher, but uh, Brad Tavares is pretty defensively sound, good chin, good grappling. And I just I just don't see Tavares being aggressive enough to take this fight uh, to, to finish Bruno Silva. Now, Bruno Silva could finish Brad Tavares, but I also just think that those qualities I met, just mentioned will make them last to a decision. And, uh, you know, his wins in the UFC... Jordan Wright, um, uh, you know, he lost Alex Pereira, took, took some damage in that, obviously survived to a decision, a good sign. Gerald Mearshart slowed down. It looks like Bruno Silva's in better shape for this camp, so maybe lasting uh, to a decision will be easier for him here, hopefully, but uh, also we'll hope that he keeps his uh, output down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, the next bet we both liked, we both got, um, Pavlovich and Blades under one and a half. Who isn't placing this bet right now? Like, you know, Sergi Pavlovich is a first round finisher and, you know, as soon as he hits that first strike on you, it's 20 strikes in a row. It's not just one and done. So, um, he feels, feels you, uh, about to go down. He's going to pressure you. And I think Blades also has the opportunity to finish this early, so, seems like a pretty simple bet for a heavyweight fight in the apex. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, Pavlovich, all of his UFC fights are ending in the first round. Um, you know, that one loss with over him was in the first round as well. And then Blades, I mean, most of his fights are first or second round finishes as well. A few decisions thrown in there, but uh, yeah. I think right. when you got Pavlovich in there with you, he's going to be putting the pressure on you. Also, it ended in the first round. Right. I also don't see like Blades. Blades sometimes like influences the tempo of a fight because he's the wrestler. Um, and I think Pavlovich just doesn't let anyone set the tempo. He's the one that just going to come out there and do that. So um, I think he takes one of them takes over early and finds a knockout. Here come more of the prop bets uh, or more. Uh, fun, fun plays. Uh, got Bobby Green by knockout. I, I can't stop talking about it, but this dude has knockout power. I, he does it, it says decision a lot on his record, but you know he's piecing up. Uh, Ally Quenta finished him. Doesn't find a lot of other finishes, but Jared Gordon's been knocked out three times. Um, you know hit his four losses. I believe he has only one of them is by decision. The rest are by knockout. Um, and with the volume adding up over time, I think that Green finds a knockout in this fight. So I'm playing an extra little extra cheddar on that one. Uh, down further, Ricky Glenn and Diagos going with Glenn by finish. Glenn, uh, like I said, he's got the tools to submit and to knock out Diagos here. And if you guys have watched Diagos' fights, just doesn't have a good chin. 
Um, you watch the Armin Sarukian fight. It wasn't the best left hook ever, but instantly kind of went to the ground and then got battered from there. And then um, Sean Soriano rocked him about three times in the first round, which uh, I don't think he's even in the UFC anymore. So, uh, And I think Yagos, seven of his ten losses or something like that are by finish. So I'm just going to play into that here. Glenn looks huge at lightweight. It's kind of hard to believe he ever, ever fought at featherweight. So I like a finish here. Um, last two bets. First bet uh, would be Badgerald Donna by finish in rounds one or two. What do you think of that one? Yeah, I mean, pretty much all of his wins are by knockout and usually in the first, sometimes second round. So um, I like that clear path to victory there. He has been knocked out a few times as well. So You also don't know if... Uh... I mean, Donna, I haven't seen him attempt a submission, but who knows if Brady w- walks his way into a guillotine. So I think that's a decent cover. And, uh, yeah, with the round in, round one and two. Um, and then to polish it off, as you guys probably saw, Francis Marshall by knockout. Again, for plus 650, I looked, okay, I looked at the odds of Brady high stand by knockout is plus 600. And I think that Francis Marshall is way more likely to find a knockout than Brady High Stand. At, at plus 650, I got to put something on this. Um, he's just got heavy hands. I've, you know, his contender series fight, he had uh, Connor Matthews stumbling from his punches consistently. And then Marcelo Rojo, you know, just kind of flatlined him with a short right hand. Um, a taller guy like Gomez, you know, who knows how his chin holds up to, to a smaller guy with more power. And, uh, yeah, I, I like uh, I like these sprinkles here to hopefully give us some a little little extra play. Um, but yeah, if you guys want to see the full sheet, there it is. Any other plays you were looking at this weekend, Carson? Um, no, just touching on the Marshall one. I mean, um, when he does hurt his opponents, he tends to go for a takedown after two, which can get kind of annoying if you're playing the knockout prop true but, uh i mean he still could find a ground and pound two from that um position but i also do like the finish for him, marshall all right uh yeah these are the bets for pavlovich versus blades again on that big win streak guys drop a like subscribe leave a comment of your bets down below and uh yeah peace peace I know it doesn't matter from the trenches. I'm built like this. Don't doubt to me, I couldn't do it. <laughs>